What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today instead of doing a vlog, I wanted to do a little bit of a more formal type video because if you've been following me on social media, you'll know that I switched recently from the A6500, which I just bought, and quickly returned that for a Canon AED. So I really wanted to make a video talking about the reasons why I decided to do that and kind of go over that a little bit since it is maybe a little bit controversial, maybe it doesn't make the most sense to a lot of people, so I wanted to sit down and talk about my reasoning behind it. So without further ado, here are my reasons why I switched from the Sony A6500 to the Canon AED. I switched to this guy right here yesterday. So a little bit of backstory for those of you that don't know me too well. I own Joshua Bryan Cinema. I do mostly wedding films and small business promotional films. And I also do like short films and a little bit more creative work on the side. But my main camera that I use is a Canon C100. And before that, I used a Canon T4i. Those have been the camera that I use. So I'm very used to Canon. Anyone that follows cameras and gear and that type of stuff knows that in recent years, Canon has not been the most competitive in terms of specs and pricing for their cameras. It hurt me a little bit to spend as much as I did for the C100, um, given that there was plenty of other cameras that cost way less than it that had better on paper specs. But I went with my gut and I chose the C100 for numerous reasons, which I won't list right now because they happen to be a lot of the same reasons why I decided to go with the ADD. It was time for me to buy a B cam and I was looking all over the internet. My first gut reaction was to get a Canon ADD because I needed something that was smaller, that could go on a gimbal, that had really good autofocus, um, that was a little bit more lightweight than my C100 because my C100 is a big setup. So I was looking around and I really wanted to try something different just because I spent all this money on Canon last time. I was like, maybe I should try a different brand like Sony. I know they're good cameras. They provide a lot of good value for the money and they give a really good look if you know what you're doing. So I did a bunch of research. I saved up for a while and I pulled the trigger. I got a Sony a6500 and I got a Zion Crane for it, and I also got a Sigma 30mm 1.4. I was really excited and I got it all in, and shortly after I got the lens and I was able to actually start playing with it, I shot a vlog and I shot a bunch of test footage with it. And when I looked at the footage, I really got this gut feeling that this wasn't the camera for me. And I know that might sound pretty quick because I only had the camera for 10 days, but when you shoot a lot, like I do, you know exactly what type of workflow is the best workflow for you, and you know what kind of camera suits your shooting style better. And I could tell the Sony really wasn't giving me the creative flexibility like a Canon does for me. So basically everything just kind of boiled up, and I realized that all the reasons why I was looking to get a Canon ADD versus an A6500 to begin with, all of those reasons came true. What are those reasons? To start off with, this might seem like a small thing to people that don't shoot long shooting days, but battery life. Uh, I shot for about an hour or so and the battery went out, which might not sound like that big of a deal, but I can shoot for hours upon hours upon hours on Erica's 5D Mark III and more extreme, the C100 Mark II. It does have a lot bigger batteries, but Canons in general are known to have really, really, really solid battery life. So that was one thing that I really immediately missed was the Sony had these microscopic batteries and I was really used to these big, nice, long lasting batteries from Canon and I immediately just, mm, it was irking me. Two, this isn't as big of a deal if you're not already invested in a certain ecosystem, but Erica has a bunch of Canon lenses. And I really, really, really got accustomed to how Canon lenses look and the type of image that comes through them. And honestly, the value, because I like Canon lenses, but Sigma makes really great EF lenses. Um, and they have a whole bunch of really, really great lenses. I'm actually shooting on a Sigma 1.4 35mm right now. Basically, the options in the landscape for Sony lenses they're getting a lot better. They're nowhere near as plentiful as Canon EF lenses. There's so much variety and there's so many great options at low price points with EF glass, and there just really isn't that many at all with Sony. The only good one that I found with Sony, and again, I just switched over, so there might've been other lenses, and if you know about those, let me know down below. I would love to hear about them. But I was looking, and the only thing that came close to what I usually shoot on, which is uh, lower aperture primes, was that 30 millimeter 1.4 and it was nowhere near as crisp as an EF lens. For example, the Sigma 18 to 35, which is one of my all time favorite lenses, that's $799, which might sound like a lot, but if you know anything about camera gear and lenses and stuff, 
that's really a good deal considering it goes down to a 1.8 and stays at a 1.8 even at 18 millimeters. Something with around the same specs would be a whole lot more expensive. So once I started factoring in that I was going to have to buy a EF to E mount adapter, that way I could use some of my Canon lenses on the Sony during ceremony footage and stuff like that. And then I was gonna have to buy specific lenses for gimbal use on the Sony and all this different stuff. It just started getting complicated. I'm a very simple guy. I like things to be simple, easy to use. That way the gear is not getting in my way and my creativity can kind of just focus and hone in and I can focus on making the film. So with the ADD, I can just switch over any lens I want because they're all canning glass and I don't have to worry about any of that extra stuff, any of the expensive adapters or the hassle of an adapter and then the adapter sapping up more battery life from an already really crappy battery. So basically in essence, the lenses too were really just something that I knew, I just knew that it wasn't gonna be right for me. So I sent them back. My third reason is the menu system. And I actually didn't send the camera back because of the menus, because surprisingly, I didn't think they were that difficult. Although a lot of people say Sony menu systems are very incredibly hard to figure out. Um, I didn't have that much of an issue with it. The scroll wheels and stuff were very easy and I could assign different, uh, and I could assign different buttons to certain things I want to use frequently. But once I got the Canon 80D in my hands, I started going through the menus and playing around with it. I was like, crap, this is what they're talking about because the Sony menus weren't bad per se, especially not in the A6500 because they updated them. But the Canon menus, so, so easy. The LCD is so, so bright, so easy to use because you can take advantage of full touchscreen abilities on the entire LCD screen and on the Sony you can only tap the focus. The ADD you can do both. You can tap the focus which is phenomenal because it's a dual pixel autofocus. And on top of that the menus all together are just laid out very simple, very easy to use and when you're on a shooting day and you're fast paced and you're go go go, you really want something that's not going to get in your way. And the last reason which a lot of people fight about when it comes to Canon users versus Sony users or Panasonic users um, is color science. This is controversial, I guess, a little bit, but I think it's pretty widely accepted, especially with Canon fans. The Canon has the best color science out there, unless you're going for something like a red, uh, Red Raven, Scarlet, Epic, which are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just for the brain. In my opinion, nothing matches it. Canon's color science, their skin tones, everything looks beautiful straight from the camera. Even when you shoot in YDR or C-Log, it still looks really, really gorgeous out of the camera. And that's something that really wasn't happening with the Sony. I played around with a couple different profiles and I know that people can get good looks from it because I've seen gorgeous videos on the internet using the A6500. So I know it's not the camera's crap. I just think that you have to be used to shooting Sony colors and you have to be used to grading that and it's different workflow. And since I'm already used to the Canon workflow and Canon colors and things like that, it's really hard for me to sit on my computer and look at the Sony looking so much different, especially when I'm gonna have to be stitching them together in a multi-cam setup uh, when I shoot wedding ceremonies and just wedding videos in general. I have to match those clips. Now, there's software that's coming out, like Film Convert is coming up with the uh, camera syncing software, which I think they basically match the colors and color correct for you. But again, it's extra steps, and I like the way the ADD looks straight out of the camera. Straight at the camera, I think it looks gorgeous. It gets exactly what I want. I never have to think twice about it. Which kind of leads me to my last point, which is, I guess, essentially just like a summary of what I was saying before. Um, I just prefer Canon to Sony. That's not anything against Sony. Like I said, I've seen tons of people make really, really gorgeous films on Sony. Sony FS7, FS5, A6500, A6300. A buddy of mine, Tyler Harrington, made gorgeous work on his a6300 so again nothing against sony it just you have to know yourself and you have to know what type of filmmaker you are and what kind of footage and workflow is the best for you and for me that's canon <laughs> i told uh my friend drew uh shooting canon for me is the closest thing to just shooting with my eyes which sounds really cheesy and i laugh a lot when i say it but it's true because i don't have to think about oh if I shoot in this, uh, if I shoot in this color profile, maybe it won't be the right exposure, or maybe it won't be the right color when I get it back to post. Like everything's exactly what I wanted it to be when I was shooting it, and that's something that I haven't experienced with other cameras. Maybe I just don't know how to use the other cameras. Maybe I'm just better trained with Canon cameras. I like how long the batteries last. I love the lens selection I get to use. I love how ergonomic and easy to use their cameras are. The Sony kept on falling out of my hands because it's so tiny, which some people say is a good thing that it's tiny, but I prefer a beefier camera because it fits in your hands better. So all around the Canon ecosystem is just my favorite. Um, I don't think I'll ever leave it, especially not after hearing the C200 being announced, which 
I've been nerding out about all day long. If you're used to Canon, I would highly recommend checking out the 80D because it really is, to me, the perfect B camera as it sits right now. <clears throat> it would be great to have 4K, but I don't need 4K. None of my clients ask for it. I've never been asked to deliver in 4K. Or if you're really just starting and you don't have any experience with a lot of cameras, I probably wouldn't say start at this level of camera, but if you're trying to get like your first real camera that you can really book gigs on, definitely check out the A6500 or even the A6300. I think that if you save a little bit of money, get the A63 and a nice lens, it's better off than just spending all your money on the A6500. So both are great cameras, but in the end, Canon always has my heart. Which camera would have you guys chosen? Do you agree with my decision? Do you not? Let me know down in the comments. Also, remember, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I'm trying new things out. Um, I didn't really rehearse this. I just sat down and kind of went over my opinions and my thought process. So if you didn't like the video, also let me know. I want feedback. I want to know what you guys like. I want to know what I can do differently to make better content for you guys. So until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video.